And new this morning, police respond to a shooting on Westwood Park Drive around 11 last night. Now they did find a female with multiple gunshot wounds to the upper body inside of that home. We don't have any details right now on the gravity of her condition, but police do tell us that she is alive. Today we will be in Shreveport, Louisiana, the third most populous city in Louisiana after New Orleans and Baton Rouge. Shreveport is located in the top northwestern corner of the state and the Red River extends along the west bank of the city. For one family that calls the city home, back-to-back -back tragedies will leave loved ones with many questions and unforeseen heartbreak, tearing a family apart in the worst way. Breaking now, police are on the scene of a shooting on Crooked Creek in Shreveport. We're told the suspect is currently barricaded inside a home there. Police say it started around 7 a.m. as an argument between neighbors when one of the neighbors shot the other. We do know at least one person was taken to the hospital with injuries. Police have the area blocked off and are asking you to stay away at this time. We'll continue to update you as we find out more. 59-year-old Sharon Goosey was a beloved mother, grandmother, sister, aunt, friend, and so much more. She was a woman of faith that was truly grateful for life and appreciated every day that she woke up. Sharon adored her family, especially her children, and seemed to always demonstrate that love towards them. She was a cosmetologist by trade and also enjoyed the Dallas Cowboys. Sadly, in July 2023, Sharon was hit with a devastating blow when our oldest son lost his life under bizarre circumstances. At that time, 38-year-old Ramaria Grant, who went by Twank, was involved in an alleged DV situation that led to multiple people being shot and a police standoff. Though authorities never released Twank's name and photo, I was able to gather info about the suspect. According to news reports, Christy Russell was the said person that was one of the victims along with her children and neighbors. When I got further into it, it seems as if Christy was in a relationship with Twank. Again, Twank is Sharon Goosey's oldest son and was a beloved son, father, brother, uncle, friend, and much more. However, on July 10, 2023, he did something that was allegedly so out of character that many loved ones questioned how the whole day went down. According to law enforcement, that tragic event on that July 10th began just before 7 a.m. that day. Allegedly, Twank texted his girlfriend, Christy, that he was coming over to unalive her and everyone else in the home. When he arrived, he allegedly had a large amount of weapons and ammo and began shooting into the home before making entry. Then, allegedly, one of the neighbors tried to engage, but he was shot. Another neighbor was said to intervene, and allegedly, there was a gun battle between the neighbor and Twank before he eventually made entry into Christy's home. According to the official reports, Christy was able to escape, but one of her teens was still left in the home. When officers arrived, Twank allegedly barricaded himself inside the house and began exchanging gunfire with the responding officers. The police said he was heavily armed with an AR-style gun and a massive amount of ammunition. At some point, Twank allegedly also fired gunshots into the room where the teenage girl was hiding. As negotiators tried to get the man to surrender, officers used armored vehicles to get into the house and rescue the girl who had been shot. Authorities also said that they deployed drones, but Twank allegedly shot them down. Again, the report does not give his name, but it does refer to the suspect as a male. After about five hours around noon, that is when Twank allegedly set the house on fire and his body was found after the flames were extinguished. Very busy day for law enforcement here in South Shreveport. That is Flournoy Lucas Road that you see directly behind me, and that's the Quiet Cove subdivision. Around 7 this morning in the 9400 block of Crooked Creek Drive with what was initially believed to be some sort of argument between neighbors, but police are now saying it was a domestic dispute of some kind that escalated with gunfire and two people shot. Witnesses said that they heard arguments coming from a house when when a neighbor went to check it out, he was shot. We're hearing that the suspect and his girlfriend were in the home along with a 13-year-old child. Go ahead and roll that video for me, guys, and we'll show you you the scene. This is a dispute between neighbors, as you mentioned, that we believe started around 7 a.m. this morning. One person was shot, taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The uh, shooter, we're told, barricaded himself inside that house. 
Later, we heard about a 13-year-old who was being held hostage and who had also been shot. The teenager got out, according to police, and both victims uh, were taken to the hospital. The coroner did arrive at around 2.30, and at about 4.30, a body was recovered from the house. Here's what Shreveport police had to say earlier today. And we did have two individuals struck by gunfire during the initial exchange this morning. We do believe this is a domestic fuel incident. We were able to um, extricate a 13-year-old thir kid from the house. Now the suspect had, uh, has barricaded himself in the house. He has set the house on fire. The house is fully engulfed in flames. Our officers have been fired on more than once today uh, with high-powered rifle fire. No one is injured outside of the two people that we know were transported. Hoosier SWAT, Caddo Parish Sheriffs, Shreveport PD, and the U.S. Marshals tried to negotiate with the suspect, but it seemed he did during that fire. An autopsy will be performed, and there is no update on the neighbor or child's conditions, but we did learn that they had non-life-threatening injuries. I spoke with an aunt and the mother of the suspect, and they were shocked and dismayed and are looking for answers as well. So when I was over closer to the scene, there was some blown out windows on at least one vehicle, and there was also bullet holes in some of the houses across the street. So a very dangerous situation that has now ended. As you can see in the photo, Christy was displaced with her two kids because she lost her home and everything in that fire. The aftermath of the tragedy caused a lot of back and forth about what really happened. Christy took to Facebook a week after the tragedy and said, Good morning. There's so many rumors going around. I can't keep up. Everybody knows so much, so let's clear the air. Who was there? Nobody but me, my two kids, and Twank. Oh yeah, and my cameras. Have a wonderful day. That was that. She said what she said and left it at that. Christie's post about this tragedy seemed to come one day after one of Twank's cousins wrote a lengthy post on Facebook. That cousin said, What I just seen really disturbed my soul. I'm not justifying what my cousin Twank did wasn't wrong, but everybody and everything that had something to do with what led up to what happened was wrong. I've been listening and reading all the stories and assumptions on here and ain't said nothing because I was clueless. Even being on the scene talking to the negotiator, I still didn't open my mouth because I felt he was lying or thought he was talking to a dumb person. Not one time have I heard or read anybody say my cousin was shot before the police even pulled up. It's been a whole week today. Oh, now I have questions. Why haven't the news said anything else? Where are the updates? Why have law enforcement still yet to release Twank's name and name of the victims and all the shooters to the public? Law enforcement stated that they have text messages of him stating he was about to come unalive the woman. Why, though? What made him say that? Was it really another dude in the house, or could she have told him this to iss him off? Why nothing else have been said about the neighbor that was shot? Who were the two people that were exchanging gunfire with Twank, shot Twank in the shootout before the police arrived? If he was standing outside the house shooting towards the street and two people were shooting towards the house at him, couldn't they have shot the house up? Did he walk in the room and shoot the little girl or did stray bullets hit her? What kind of gun was the little girl shot by? Per news and law enforcement, the shooter had an AK-47. He shot a 13 or 15 year old girl in the leg, arm and stomach and the neighbor shot two police officers, shot at other law enforcement willingly gave the little girl to the police to seek medical attention, shot up the Boisier tank, shot two drones down, shot up multiple houses, set the house on fire with him in there, and was shooting at the fire department while they were trying to put the fire out. But he did smoke inhalation. Nah, for real, make it make sense. No matter what went down, what black person's going to sit in a house that's on fire, they alive, they not weak and in well-being, to move freely and choose to smoke inhalation. They got to come better than that. My aunt deserves to know how her boy really passed away, respectfully. The good news from everything, though, on that day, every person Twink allegedly shot all survived. As of the recording of this video, it has been nine months since the horrendous events that summer day in 2023, and still Twink's name was never mentioned in the news as the suspect, which is strange. As the family laid him to rest and tried to put life back together without Twink, Sorrow would rear its ugly head again in the family. However, this time, it was not one of Sharon's kids, but tragically, her life was stolen in the worst way. 
Sharon seemed to be a light in her family's life, and her smile was one filled with joy. So why would someone bring harm upon her? Well, according to the police, on April 9, 2024, a male suspect called Shreveport Police Department dispatch operator just after 11 p.m. that Tuesday, claiming that he shot his mother because she was poisoning him. 911 dispatch then convinced the caller to wait for patrol officers outside of the home, and he did comply. When authorities arrived, they learned that Sharon's younger son, 36-year-old LaDerrick Gant, was the one who called 911. Upon entry inside the home, they found Sharon suffering from multiple gunshot wounds to the upper body. According to the news release, she was quickly transported to a local hospital where, despite the best efforts of the medical professional, she succumbed to her injuries the following morning on April 10th, nine months to the day her son Twink lost his life. However, her unaliving did not make any sense, and the fact that her own son took her life was even more shocking, especially because all of Derek did was preach and rap about the gospel. According to his social media, he posted scriptures almost daily and made music to represent the kingdom. On April 7, 2024, just two days before he took his mother's life, his Facebook post read, Genesis 9 and 6, Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God, he made men. This is a natural law. God said that in Genesis, before the law came by Moses, unaliving is from the devil. Being a believer, a follower of Jesus, we're not about taking lives, but saving them. In the kingdom of God, we live a lifestyle of peace, mercy, love, and forgiveness. From all accounts, it seemed that Lederick was living for Christ, and in his rap music, he often talked about how his life changed for the better. In his past, he said he shot people, robbed people, and had plenty of shootouts. He also said that he also almost lost his life twice, but eventually found God. Lederick seemed to be walking down the right path for the Lord's kingdom. And one of his posts said, I wish my brother would have known this, how the devil uses offenses to trap you. But don't worry, big bro, RIP, as long as I'm here, it's up with the kingdom of darkness. In Jesus' name, long live Twink Jones. Sadly, the darkness took over him and Lederick unalived his own mother. He claimed that she was poisoning him, but from what I could tell, she loved all her kids very much. Sharon had recently lost Twank, so why would she want to unalive her other son out of the blue? Turning now to an update, Shreveport police have arrested a man in connection to a overnight shooting. Police say 36-year-old Ladare Gant is charged with one count of second degree. The shooting happened at around 1115 on 3L Westwood Park. Police say when officers arrived, Gant confessed to shooting his mother. It all does not make sense, as well as what Twank did. What caused the Gantt boys to snap and harm the people they proclaim to love? Let me know your thoughts on this. Lederick is currently at the Shreveport City Jail and facing a charge of second degree unalivement and went into custody without incident. The two different incidents were both very heartbreaking tragedies in so many ways. It seems that Sharon also had a daughter that she was very close with and that daughter was close with her brothers. Now she has lost her mother, her brother, and the other will most likely end up behind bars for the rest of his life, if convicted. That in itself has to be a hard pill to swallow. My thoughts and prayers are with all involved in both of these tragic situations, and I pray for the continued healing for those who will harm but survive. So please don't forget to comment your thoughts and prayers for these families in these difficult times, and hit that like button and share to make your people aware. And as always, remember to stay woke. Things change quickly.